Hello and welcome back to my channel. Recently I made a video all about street photography using Google Maps. Kind of my way of getting over the fact I can't travel and I focused on the state of Alaska. And then recently I done an interview with Joan Michelle which I think will be up soon on her channel and we discussed the idea of street photography in the cities where we each live. So I live in Brighton so she's going to do Brighton, she's already done Brighton, I'll link that down below and I've done Jersey City where she lives. <laughs> and rather embarrassingly my geographical knowledge of states and cities in America is not the best and I knew it was near New York, I had no idea how near and I didn't really know where it was but I was so glad when she said Jersey City, it's gonna make me sound horrible but because of my research for my last video I went on a site which has all funny Google map scenes and I remember very clearly in Jersey City there was a guy falling down some stairs really like artistically and as a photo it looks brilliant, his face was blurred out um, so I went to that spot, but unfortunately they blurred out the whole scene now, so you can't find it. I guess for the man, but I mean, he was already blurred out. Uh, so that was a bit disappointing, but then it kind of led me on to realising that a lot more in Jersey City is blurred out, not just people, scenes and buildings. Don't know for what reason, but it did make it a little bit more limited, as in Alaska I rarely ever came across whole buildings who were blurred out. But for whatever reason, I don't know. So let's have a look at those images. To challenge myself a bit with this one, I have gone for black and white. So I was going to screenshot them and desaturate them. I've also adjusted the levels a little bit with these, but that's it. I don't really want to hide the fact they're Google screenshots. And I've also done a six by seven crop just to make it like a bit of a medium format feel to it. And yeah, I actually really enjoyed it because last time I was doing it in color, I was going to say shooting in color, screenshotting in color. And it was really hard, I didn't really know what I was looking for. In the end, I kind of worked out. I wanted people, places, flags, that kind of thing. But with the restriction of looking for black and white, it was a lot easier. So I was just looking for shadows and light. And yeah, I much more enjoyed it this time. So if you're gonna give it a go and you feel a bit overwhelmed by where to go, what to shoot, try shooting in black and white. Screenshotting in black and white. So yeah, as you can see from this image, you see the six by seven crop. Um, the fact I really looked out for that shadow of the building to add a bit of dynamicness to the image and you've also got a lot of repetitive lines, the building, the lines on the street and the signposts and yeah repetitiveness is something I look for quite a lot when I'm framing an image. This one for me is, it doesn't sum up America but we don't, it doesn't get too hot here to be honest as you probably know um, so aircon isn't really a thing most homes like my own we don't have aircon and I mean I don't know if this is sort of like a DIY aircon vent or what it is but I don't know I've always kind of been fascinated with I know this is Jersey but in New York you know when you've got these massive buildings you've got all the aircon units like sticking out the window and to me it just looks really precarious I'm sure it's obviously not but it's just a sight you don't really see very often here. Before doing this I literally had no idea what to expect of Jersey City but you can really tell how close it is to New York. You can see a lot of influences there. And one of the things I really like is the street art. And yeah, I just really like the way they're both sort of looking at the camera. There's a bit of symmetry of the two people and the fact they're both holding something in their hand and have a logo on the t-shirt. Um, so yeah, I like that repetitiveness and it's kind of a bit of good luck someone looking at you because on Google Maps it's much harder than in person. If I saw this in person, I could wait 10, 20, 30 minutes for that right shot to come along on Google Maps like that was the only good one if you move along a bit then a band's in front of it and it's just really hard to line things up in Google Maps so yeah I'm actually quite pleased with this one and then going on to this one another graffiti and I just like the way she's directly lined up below the graffiti here or the kid looking up and the fact it was I was able to frame it in the middle as well so I like that. So this one maybe is me fulfilling more stereotypes I have of America in my head but the school buses we don't really have school buses here unless you go to like a private school and it's just sort of a staple of America. It's kind of a shame it's in black and white, you can't see the yellowness and then you've got these people sort of using the shadow of the tree to have a picnic which I thought was kind of candid, kind of nice. This one is a prime example of where I was sort of being led by the shadows in the frame and I like the fact it's sort of a bit of an unusual one because he's got his hand up and uh, yeah apart from that the framing is a bit weird if you were going to go by the rule of thirds, he's perfectly on that right third there, but I don't normally adhere to that personally. Um, yeah, I was just drawn in by the shadow there. And before I go on to my next one, just a reminder, my next Q&A is coming up, Your Questions Answered, episode two. I had a really great time the first time, I was a bit nervous that I wasn't going to get any questions. 
Um, but I got more than enough for that episode, so I'm going to carry some questions over for the next one. And please send in your questions to madisonbquestions at gmail.com. They can be anything for me or photography related. If you want to ask a question about your own project, your own photographs, your social media, whatever it is, and you can attach videos, photos, whatever you want to the email if it makes it easier for you to sort of articulate what you want to ask. So send those over and episode two of the Q&A will be coming up soon. So back to this one. This one is just, I just thought it was a pretty cool guy really. And it's rare that if you were actually out and about photographing, could you photograph someone when you're standing in the middle of the road? So I like it for that. This one is one of those ones which kind of made me question street photography when it comes to morals and stuff. If you could see their faces, I wouldn't have included it. Um, but I just like the framing of it. I like that you've got the stairs leading down and it kind of contains them. I like their body language. Yeah, there's just something about it which is quite classic street photography. But yeah, if their faces were seen and I hadn't got the consent from them, I wouldn't use it. Um, but as it is, obviously Google Maps blurs it all out. And yeah, there's just a number of elements which I like about this image. This one, I just found it kind of funny that things kind of line up. As I said earlier, it's kind of rare for things to line up the way you want it in Google Maps, but this was one of the times that it actually did line up. This was me kind of going from more classic street photography scenes. You've got busyness and people filling up the frame. But if I'm honest, you know, it's not the most effective shot. You kind of feel a bit far away and if you zoom in, it becomes quite blurry. You've got people shopping here on the left and then more going on. And if when you went to the right a bit, you could see it from a different angle, but it's still there was always a little bit going on, but not loads. So I think it had potential this, but it, yeah, I think personally it's a bit of an underwhelming frame. This one, I just love the symmetry. So you've got these two guys, both wearing black, holding their phones in their left hand. And then you've also got these two trees. So I love the lines in it. You've got all these repetitive lines. And I mean, I tried to frame it in a different way. So you sort of, you had some leading lines directing you to the people, but it just wasn't possible of the angles on offer. But I really like this one for the repetitiveness of it and the sort of symmetry. Like that could almost, if you split, like could be like a mirror. So yeah, I, I like this one. Here you've got a bit of graffiti and you've got a t-shirt. Look, smile, greet. Um, and then I think it says, change the world. I just like it. I tried to capture something other than people and the road and street photography and get something a bit different. Trying to get sort of that detail shot as in if you were actually trying to create a series of images, what you're going to go on and publish. Obviously I wouldn't publish these, um, but it's nice to try and approach it in the same sort of way. This one I took on the way in, I accidentally through Google Maps went into a tunnel, which I think if you go through it, you end up in New York. So I was, <laughs> I was very literal. So the minute on Google Maps, when you're in the tunnel, I went from Jersey City in the left to New York, then I stopped because I just want this to be Jersey. And technically the, pot, the, <laughs> the photos I've taken in the tunnel are Jersey, according to Google Maps. And this was at the beginning where all the cars are lining up and I just like the fact you got all these cones out and then you got these big buildings at the back. And this was leading into that tunnel and composition wise, it's one of my favorites. It's one of the few images here that I would have taken if I was out physically with my camera. And then these images are when I'm actually in the tunnel and because obviously the camera they've taken on, I mean, also you can see the railings don't actually match up because of the way they've merged them. So it's a bit higgledy piggledy. And then, yeah, you can see how grainy it is because I mean, even in color, these images almost look black and white just because it's so dark in these tunnels. And you've also got these weird neon like red lights. I think they are in there. So it creates, I might just say I shot this from like 3200 film, <laughs> uh, but I quite like it. And I like the way I tried to get it. So you've got the railings on the left and the line in the middle of the road sort of leading you through the frame. Just a slice of daily life. I think these people are probably going out for their lunch break or something it looks like. And it's sort of the moment when everyone's waiting and then one guy goes for it. And it's the sort of thing I'd probably be drawn to if I was out shooting my camera. Obviously I wouldn't get this angle from this weird height in the middle of the road. But yeah, someone running across the road, that is something I probably would have gone for. Now this one, I don't know why, it's my favourite one. I like the composition of it. I like the way the line of the car park goes through the back of the trolley. I like the shadow of the tree coming down. And I took quite a few shots of this trying to get the right angle and framing because it was quite hard to zone in on it without it becoming too blurry. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I can't tell if it's really crap or really good, but I really like 
yeah, it's my favourite one, and I can't tell you why. And I probably wouldn't have taken it or been drawn to it if I was out and about photographing. And then this is the last shot I took. It's not quite what I was aiming for. So what I was aiming for, maybe if I was cropping it a bit smaller than 6x7. This is a van on the side of the van and it has this lounge. And I wanted to make it look like this pedestrian on the right was sort of like walking into it. Create kind of a surreal image. I don't think it's quite worked what I was going for, but I still like it. But yeah, if I... Maybe if I crop it, but I think even though, I think it's the angle is a bit weird if I sort of brought it round a bit so it's less at a diagonal, but that's what I was going for. So that is it for my images. I actually really enjoyed sort of returning to this idea and having the restriction of black and white. Sometimes putting limitations and restrictions on yourself can actually really improve your photography. Even though if it was counterintuitive, often it can help. So if you're in a creative rut, try putting a few restrictions on. And definitely go check out Joan's video of her one when she took photos of Brighton using Google Maps. It's a really great video, but also kind of weird for me because I know where everything is here. I've never used Google Maps. And so seeing it through someone's eyes who's never been here using a computer is kind of a weird thing. And yeah, but in particular, I really love these images she's taken. There's just a really lovely candid element to them. And this one in the bus, I don't know, it almost looks like it's not been taken on Google Maps. So yeah, link down for that one. Go check it out. And to finish off, I've put together a video of films and series I've been recommended and have watched examining racism. I think it's incredibly important for us to keep the momentum going of the Black Lives Matter movement and to educate ourselves. And I've watched all of these and I found them all really informative. So if you're looking for a film or series to watch, hopefully one of these will help you out. So thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. I don't mind staying up all night. Cause I came to get it right Holy cow, I won't really leave without Dear white people the, the minimum requirement of black friends needed to not seem racist Has just been raised to two Sorry, but your weed man, Tyrone, does not count You bring it on Racism describes a system of disadvantage based on race So cute Is it weaved? Weaved It's weave Noun Present tense. How much progress is it really if now there's a private company making money off the GPS monitor? We now have more African Americans under criminal supervision than all the slaves back in the 1850s. The first time I visited death row, I wasn't expecting to meet somebody the same age as me. From a neighborhood just like ours. Could have been me, mama. But what you're doing is gonna make a lot of people upset. You always taught me to fight for the people who need the help the most. I'll be brave enough for the both of us. I'm taking you dancing. Let's go. You're willing to risk getting caught so we can dance? Hell yeah. Don't worry, you're safe here. I just want to let you know that I'm okay and that I love you. I want a guy to show me myself. I want him to love me so deeply. I'm not afraid to show him how ugly I can be. If you were a white male, would you wish to be an engineer? I wouldn't have to. I'd already be one. She was a genius. She was brilliant. But she paid him. Look, I'm sure that he's gonna turn up. First name? Jamal, J-A-M-A-L. Does he have any distinguishing scars, tattoos, gold teeth? Uh, does he go by any street names? He doesn't have a street name. and not reflect the times. 
We're just on our way to work at NASA, sir. I had no idea they hired. There are quite a few women working in the space program. I just don't.